When you get you know, down to the last uh, eight teams, um, every draw is, is very difficult. Uh, I've watched, I've seen Benfica many times as they were obviously in the Man United group and Basel group and um, <laughs> it's a tough opponent for us. Um, I think um, the fact that we play probably the first game away from home uh, uh, is good, a little bit like the Napoli game. Yeah, we're not looking. We're not looking. Yeah, we're not looking further, further than that. We've got two games there, and that's all we're gonna focus on. Not sure you can say that to the fans that are interested in this Barcelona, given the history of Champions League ties between the two clubs. Well, are you writing off AC Milan straight away? As easy as that. Well, it's the They're the leaders of the Serie A. Yeah. You can speculate if you want. Uh, I, I'm not. And then, of course, if you do manage to reach the final, the prospect is it would be against. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a script. You're well going. ahead in the future, you are, man. Uh, well ahead. No, no comments. I mean, <laughs> are you, yeah, is it game by game? That's why. That's why I've learned in my. Playing uh, career and uh, managing and coaching career. Obviously, it's Western this weekend in mm. the FA Cup, and then three very big games in six days. And you know, I tell you, but the record Manchester City, Tottenham, and then Benfica. That's a tough schedule, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Um, you know, I t t this morning we we got the players back to focus on on the next game, Leicester, in the FA Cup. Uh, We've seen how difficult uh, it's proven so far, our path in the FA Cup. You know, with Birmingham, we had a replay. So we have, to, uh, we have to be aware that we need to perform again at a very high level to be able to go through. Because as you know, the, you know, the FA Cup is, is um, exciting because um, you have always to expect the unexpected. Yeah, and, and luckily, as yes, you know, we have everybody fit, the whole squad. Uh, we we will need everybody, the whole the whole squad. And uh, I'm quite pleased. Uh, you know, it's difficult um, for some games, you know, to leave certain players out. But we have such a intense schedule that uh, it's great to be in a position like this. And obviously, you say fit physically, but also boosted. I would have thought. I think every every win uh, just gives you uh, a little bit of, of confidence, and so um, you know we we won against Birmingham, then we won against Stoke, another difficult one, uh, then we won the other night, and and that, that brings a little bit of belief back into the team, into the players. Um, and I, you know it's pleasing to see that uh, because you can speak as much as you want, but at the end of the day we are in a result business, and that's what uh, makes the difference. What would you describe as the Dimatteo effect? You've got a hundred percent win rate. Uh, <coughs> what have you done differently since you took charge? No, uh, I think just you know trying to speak to the players individually and try to focus them on the next task and try. You know to get the responsibility and make them aware you know of what our targets are and and just you know bring a little bit of that you know s s team spirit back and uh, spirit of sacrifice as well and passion you know for the game speaking one on one with the players yeah, as I said individually yeah, individually <laughs> with the group but also individually very much. 
So I'm not, I'm not going to go uh, back to the past. I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. Um, as I said, we just have to get results. You know, we need to get the next result, and that's that's what we're focusing on. Do you believe in utilizing you know, the experience of the senior players and obviously the job I, I, on the touchline? Giving I, I believe in utilizing all the players that we have. Unfortunately, everybody's available, and uh, and that's what I believe in. Is it okay for senior players to give you coaching as well? Ah, you know, I've I've had a, a long playing career myself at the highest level and I've been coaching for some years now as well and I you know I expect uh, everybody to to be involved and everybody to to help each other uh, on the pitch and the ones that are on the bench and that's that's what I believe in Should be about smoking. Excuse me smoking. Smoking. Me smoking Players smoking Didier was pictured with a cigar after the game on Wednesday uh, well, in uh, in many other countries, uh, a lot of players smoke. Um, so I, I know I I don't live with with my players. Um, I have a I have a nice family myself. So I think they are old enough to understand what's right for them. Just finally, from me, Fernando Torres didn't seem to be joining in as much with the celebrations on the pitch on Wednesday. Did he still concerned about his? He's very happy. He was very pleased. Very happy for the team and for himself and. Uh, and and everybody else, you know, there was a good atmosphere. Uh, I think on the pitch after the game and in the dressing room too. Roberto, um, the team that you're going to put out against Leicester at the weekend, presumably that's going to be very different from midweek. How different do you think it will be? Um, we obviously have to take into consideration that we played extra time on Wednesday. Yeah? Uh, so we will try and, and put a, the strongest team that we have available on Sunday to win the game. What, be, what, maybe six no, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet because you know um, we still have to see. You know, uh, we're just two days after this game, and I have to check tomorrow how people have recovered from the extra time and from the game, and then we'll think about it. Uh, what is the best solution for for the team? Do you ever wonder to yourself what AVB must be thinking now, given that suddenly everything's changed around? That's not for me to comment. Uh, I've got so much, so many things uh, in my mind that I have to think about it to prepare the next game against Leicester. Um, and then, you know, when the season is over, I might, I might reflect on that. Have you actually spoken to ADB since you, since you left? I think that's uh, that's my private life, uh, which I don't want to really talk about. I think they'll be both available for the weekend, yes. Anybody, anybody else sort of hobbling or, or struggling after Wednesday's game? Just... Well, I have a few knocks and bruises, you know. It was a very intense game, also physical at some times. But uh, we expect everybody to be ready for Sunday. Luis Felipe Scolari described the Chelsea job as hell when Andre Villas-Villas was sacked. You've been in the uh, interesting, exciting, uh, fan fantastic so far, you know. We spoke to Eddie Newton after Wednesday's game, and he said if, if he was offered the chance to stay beyond the end of the season, he, he couldn't turn it down. Would you echo those thoughts that it would be impossible for you to turn down if the club said Roberto, so you've done such a fantastic job? As I said before, I think the the club, the, the board, will make the right decisions to, uh, for the club, and um, and we all gonna respect that. Um, we have some very good people uh, in the club, and they they will take the time to to appoint whoever they think is right for the future of this club. If you don't beat Leicester on Sunday, you could face a real fixture headache fitting the. Yeah, the replay, in fact, even without that replay, it's a real fixture headache for you. Can you just tell us how worried or concerned you are? Well, that's, you know, that's again, that's after the game, you know. We are thinking uh, of you know, winning this game um, and then at the end of the game we'll see where we stand. If you don't win the game, will you lobby to have the fixture at a more convenient time in 
is there anything you can actually you could actually do? No, well, it's going to be difficult. I think it's, it's as it is, it's very congested already. So, but we will we'll worry about that uh, after the game. Just, just going back to John Terry, he's, he's made no secret himself in the past that one day he'd like to manage Chelsea. Would you consider taking him under your wing for the rest of the season and? You know, fostering that spirit of wanting to become involved in, in coaching? I think he's still too young for that, you know, he still has many years in him to play and um, I can help him uh, with his coaching badges maybe <laughs> first, but he's got so many years in, ahead of him and playing and I would always recommend to any players to play as long as they can because it's that's the best part of, uh, of you know, a footballing career. Do you, do you see him as management material in terms of I don't know. I don't know because when I was playing, you know, I, I watched around myself, and it's really difficult to to see who is actually going to become one or, or not, or who doesn't want to become one. Um, it depends how life goes and what events happens in your life, and um, so it's 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 not a, you, you can't say now, you know, what's going to happen. <coughs> Anybody else before you? Well, it's one of the most exciting competitions, uh, I would say, in, in the world because everybody watches it from uh, not only in England but um, all around the world. Um, and it's exciting because it, it moves the whole country. Everybody feels connected to it, involved, and um, it has thrown up some, some great games over the past. Uh, and this club has a, has a very good history in, the, in this competition too. Uh, uh, I remember we actually played Leicester as well uh, at the time when I was playing and you know we had a replay and it was very difficult then.